All right. Welcome to lab three. Lab three. All right. So in the first two labs of Sudoku, what I had you do was we did Latin square. That was done. We did Sudoku. And in the constructor for Sudoku, the only thing I asked you to do is make sure that when they pass in a number for the Sudoku, that you're passing, that, that it would create a Sudoku that could actually be created. In other words, if they pass in Sudoku four, the number four, that it's going to build a two, excuse me, a four by four Sudoku. And if you pass in nine, it'll build a nine by nine Sudoku. But if you pass in eight or 10 or five, it doesn't work because that number doesn't have, the square root of that number is not a whole number. Um, we got to finish the rest of it. So how does the rest of it work? How would you generate a Sudoku? So let's say the nine by nine worked, right? Let's say the nine by nine worked. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna clear this out for a second. I just did this in Excel, just to visually see it, right? So if this nine by nine worked, when we create the nine by nine integer array, the, the values will all be zero. So imagine I take that zero and all the values would be zero. Right, this because integer, the default value is zero. I, just so we don't have to deal with the zeros here, I'm gonna clear them out. This is an empty Sudoku. So if I were gonna grab a Sudoku and I was gonna to try to generate a Sudoku, that's what the rest of the constructor is gonna do. If I just started assigning random numbers, row by row and column by column, that is a way to maybe make a Sudoku. So let's say if I said one, two, three, right? And and let's just say I said one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're not random, but we're not violating any constraints so far. So our constraints in Sudoku is you can't violate, there can't be a duplicate value in the row, in the column, or in the region. And so far, this doesn't violate. Now I get down to the second row. Now if I was going row by row, column by column, I maybe would start here and say, and I'm just gonna start it with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. Doesn't violate so far, right? There's no duplicates here in this region, in this region. There's no duplicate row. There's no duplicates in the column so far. And let's say I kept on going and said seven, eight, nine, and then I said one, two, sorry, one, two, three, and then four, five, six. So far, this works. So far, this works. I've got no duplicates in the row, in the in the row, in the column, or in the region. But I'm telling you, if you keep going this way, <laughs> you will eventually get to a point where you cannot create randomness anymore, right? A random value won't work. So what values work here? The only value that works here so far is two, three, six, six, eight, nine would work, right? So let's say we said two. What works here is three would maybe work. One, three would work. Let's say what works here, let's say one. One would work, three would work, we're good so far. Four doesn't work here because of the column. Five works here, right? If I said, does six work here? Six may work so far. So what about four? Four works. And seven, eight, nine, seven can't work, but eight could work, nine could work, and then seven could work. We're not violating so far. <laughs> What's left? So as we go down this, I'm going to get to a point, trust me, I'm going to get to a point where, let's say somewhere around here, right? The only value that can be used can't be used. I'm in a catch-22. All values one through nine have either been used in the column, in the region, or in the row, and I can't, I can't use anything. So what, what, what would I do? If I said, let's throw the whole puzzle out and start again from the first one, right? Let's, let's, if I get a violation, let's say on row six, right? And start again on zero, zero, and I started again every, every time I got a violation, it would never finish. You could run this, you could run that logic a thousand times and probably 999 times you're gonna get a violation somewhere in one of those 81 spots. 
it may take five minutes of processing time to generate a working Sudoku that way, which is untenable. You can't run a game like that. You can't have it generate 8 million puzzles before it finds a good one. So a better way may be, instead of starting from the beginning, instead of starting from the beginning, if I have a problem, let's say on this cell, that where I have a, a no value works, instead of starting from the beginning, I'm gonna go back up one cell and use a different value in that cell. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna back up one more cell. And if that doesn't work, back up yet again one more cell. So what I may end up doing is backing up twice or three times to go forward once, and then go forward one more time, and then go forward and realize I have, a, I have to backtrack again, and then back to this one, use a different value, and then go forward. So I may be moving back to go forward many times, but certainly less than millions of times. For example, if I pick a random number between one and nine the whole way through, the minimum number of times I can, I can call to traverse this would be 81 times. But chances are, with backtracking, you're probably going to be around, I ran 1,000 trials, and what I found was around 250 calls. In other words, between going back and forth, every time I went back, I, I counted it again. To traverse this with backtracking was around 250 trials, which isn't bad. I'm mean, 250 in JavaScript is one millionth of a second. It's not that long. So we're gonna be doing with backtracking. This is the summation of what lab three and four is about. So lab, it's sort of split into two different labs because there's two different concepts here. What I wanna do in lab three is, and it's, I'm just making sure it's still recording. Um, what I wanna do in lab three, if I grabbed random numbers for the, let's say the first region here, and I'm gonna put one, two, three, seven, nine, eight, uh, uh, five, six, five, six, four, right? One, two, three, seven, nine, eight, five, six, four. There's no violations in row, in column, or region. And there never could be if this was the only region we did this in. So I know I can pick random numbers for the first region and be okay for region zero. If I try to do the same for region zero and region one, I could probably, I'll probably get a violation. I'll certainly get a violation if I try that same randomness between the three regions. I know I'm cool here, but I can't do it he and here and here. I can't just randomize this. Same way with the, with the column regions. I can't randomize this and this and this and expect no collisions. I know I'll never collide here, but I can't do the same thing for the across regions. I can do the same randomness, and I'm just putting, just cutting and pasting the values here, values. Darn it, good enough. <laughs> okay, it's gonna make me do it this way, that's cool. I can use the same randomness diagonally, right? So in other words, I can randomize region zero, region four, and then region eight, and I know I won't have a collision, right? I could pick any one of those shuffled random values in region zero, four, and eight without fearing that I'm gonna collide with a column or row value. So that is the end of lab three. In the constructor, after we check to make sure the size is correct, I wanna fill the diagonal regions. So let's take a look at the Java doc for this. And I did a final lab three, and I'm gonna walk through the changes in the Sudoku class for lab three. This lab two stuff you've already done in lab two. If not, I gave you the solution for it. Let's take a look at the first method I want you to create. Get region number. What this does is get region number. For a given column and row, it's gonna return you back the region number. Just a quick helper method. For example, if I called, let's say this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be column six, row zero, right? For column six, row zero, this should re that number should be two. This is region two. For column four, zero, one, two, three, four, let's say four, six, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, 
column four, column four, row six should turn me back region seven. That's what get region is. For a given column and row, return back to region. Get region's there. Get, the other get region was in lab two. Parcel Sudoku and Sudoku was done. Print puzzle. It's just a helper method, frankly. This is, if you call the print puzzle method, it'll print the state of the puzzle in the console. I want you to show me how you can traverse um, a two-dimensional array. Fill diagonal regions. This fill diagonal regions is going to be called in the constructor for Sudoku. There's nothing returned and there's nothing passed. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna fill, if I call it for the nine by nine Sudoku, it should fill regions zero, four, and eight. It should fill regions zero, four, and eight with random values. Set region, here's what set region does. Set regions avoid, you pass in the region number. So if I said set region zero, what it's gonna do is it's gonna set, uh, this one says set region two. What it's gonna do is it's gonna set region two to values, right? So in this, in this case, set region two was one, two, three, four. Not shuffled in order, right? So if I called set region zero for our puzzle, it would be one, two, three, four, five, excuse me, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I called set region zero. If I called set region three, let's say, it would set that region to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, of course, this isn't a solid, this isn't a set state. That would be pointless to do it that way. Set region would just set the numbers, right? Shuffle region. This is, you tell me the region you want shuffled and it will shuffle it for you. So I would call set region to set one, two, three, four, and then call shuffle region Let's say I say shuffle region zero. One, two, three, four is transformed to let's say two, three, one, four. But this is shuffled values, shuffle region. Shuffle array, shuffle array is easy. You pass in a one dimensional array, it shuffles the values. That's all that does. So between shuffle array, shuffle region, set region, fill diagonal regions, not so much print puzzle, and then get region number, you should be able to finish the constructor so it sets the diagonal regions. That's the end of lab three. What lab four is gonna be is filling out the rest. Column by column, row by row, using, okay, so I'm gonna clear this out so that's not to confuse you, using recursion. So what lab four is going to be is <clears throat> check to see what values can be used here. Use one of them, move on. Check to see what values can be used here. Use one of them, move on, and keep doing that until you have a problem. And if you have a problem, you're going to backtrack one. Use the other value and then move forward. That's what lab four is going to be. Okay, let's get started with lab three. Please let me know if you have any questions.